So cash credits, uh, you allow customers to return merchandise and any other allowances you make on the sales are deductions from gross sales and figuring net sales. So we're not talking about net income here. We're talking about net sales, which is usually net of things like returns and allowances. So income minus returns and allowances gives us the net sales minus other expenses gives us the net income. Okay, advanced payments. So special rules dealing with an accrual method of accounting for payments received in advance are discussed in chapter two. So in other words, uh, if you choose to have the accrual method, then we're gonna recognize revenue when we have earned the revenue. Usually we get paid after we do the work for most businesses or at the same time. A food truck, for example, does work. They get paid at the same time. So we recognized at the point in time the work was done and when we got paid or a bookkeeping business, we do the work first, usually bill the client and then get paid in the future, at which point in time we would record the revenue under an accrual method when we did the work and invoiced the client. But some businesses, usually more rare types of businesses, get paid first in advance. And we saw that if we get paid in advance, then we're gonna get the money first, and this would be like possibly a subscription model for newspapers. We get the money first, and then we record uh, the, the we would record it as unearned revenue, and then we would transfer from unearned revenue to revenue when we actually earned it, when we when we actually gave the newspapers. We saw that the IRS is gonna be skeptical of these advance payments because if you get the money in advance, the IRS position would be, well, you already have the money and we would like you to record revenue at the point in time you receive the money. So it depends how advanced the advanced is. Again, that'll be specific to certain types of industries or possibly certain types of transactions that you can you can possibly specialize in, in some cases, uh, and do your research on those advanced payment situations. So insurance proceeds. So if you receive insurance or another type of reimbursement for a casualty or theft loss, you must subtract it from the loss when you figure your deduction. So you have a loss and then you get an insurance. So why is it here under the income section? Because you might say, well, it's income. I got, I got money from the insurance company, but obviously the money is there to generally reimburse you for the loss that you've gotten. So if you're, if you're building burnt down, you have a loss, the insurance is gonna recoup the loss. The insurance then is gonna be reducing the amount of the loss that you got from the thing burning down. Now, obviously, if you got more insurance than the value of the thing that burned down, then you might have some kind of gain situation due to some a weird situation where you have a gain. So you cannot deduct the reimbursed part of the casualty or theft loss. So for information on casualty and theft losses, you can see publication 547. So again, obviously for losses, the idea is can I deduct them? If you get a reimbursement from insurance, you would think you can't deduct the part that you got reimbursed for because you got reimbursed for that part.